Okay, how many people in here are computer science majors? Nobody? Nobody's computer science? You are? Okay. When you write computer code, if you look at most any computer code, they will be, there will, you will see inequality symbols everywhere. Less than, greater than, not equal. That's a big part of computer science and how we write programs to do different things. So the first thing that you want to make sure that you're pretty good at is that you want to know what all these symbols are. You would have done this some in your past. You have a less than symbol. You have a less than or equal to symbol, a greater than and a greater than or equal to symbol, and then also a not equal symbol. And you want to know what those things mean, of course. So like if you had um, five is less than eight, well, that's obviously a true statement, right? But what if I have five is less than five? Well, that's a false statement, okay? And we use that a lot in computer science to tell the program to go in a different direction. So we use inequalities quite a bit extensively. Uh, another example, well, you know one is less than or equal to two is true, but how about this? Two is less than or equal to two, is that true? Yeah, because it's okay for it to be equal. So when you have that equal to bar underneath, then it's okay for the two numbers to be equal. So they mean totally different things. Less than and less than or equal to have a, have a different meaning to them. Okay, so here's kind of, I, you know, when, you're, when you study computer science, you know, students a lot of times, what am I going to use an inequality? Well, they're everywhere in computer science. If it weren't for inequalities, we wouldn't be able to get computers to do much of anything. So this is kind of an example of how a computer program might go. So, like, if you're doing a grade, in a, in a computer program, you have if-then statements that tell you to go in different directions in the, in the code. So, let's say that you, had, you made a grade on your, on your test. Okay, like this statement right here, we call this pseudocode. If the grade is greater than 90, then you're going to print out that the grade is an A. Okay, what if you had a 91? If you had a 91, that's a true statement, right? So if that's a true statement, that's what the computer spits out, okay? What if your grade was 89? Well, 89 greater than 90 is a false statement, so the computer would not do that. It would just go to the next line of code, okay? What if your grade was 90? Then the computer would ask the question, is 90 greater than 90? That's false, so you would not get an A. Okay, that's just kind of a... a to kind of help you see a context for where we use inequalities in computer science, okay? So that's kind of a big deal in the codes that I've written over the years. I've used a lot of inequalities in the code writing that I've done. Okay, so next thing I want to kind of focus on is how you graph certain kinds of inequalities, okay? And there's really four types of cases here. If you have X less than A, than a number A, then your graph is going to go to the left. Less than means the numbers are falling to the left. You will also have a parenthesis because there's not an equal to mark on there. <clears throat> if you have x less than or equal to a, the only difference is you're going to enclose that graph with a bracket to include that endpoint. Okay. If it's greater than, then you're going to shade to the right. That's pretty easy. Greater than means this way. Numbers are bigger that way. And again, you would have a parenthesis. And then if you have X greater than or equal to A, you're still going to the right, but there's a bracket. So when we're going through and doing graphs of inequalities, these are the kind of situations. Less than is always going to be that way. Greater than is always going to be that way. Equal to is going to have a bracket. If you don't have the equal to, it's going to have a parenthesis. Okay, that's just the foundational things you have to know for graphing an inequality. So we're going to do that on the next page. Okay, other thing that I want to kind of talk about is what we mean by a in-between inequality. Okay, so it basically goes like this. These are the possibilities you have. If you see something like negative 2 is less than x is less than 5, what that means is, the, is x is a number that's in between negative 2 and 5. That's just how we write that. The meaning of this is x is going to be bigger than negative 2 and smaller than 5 at the same time. That's how we write 
in an inequality that the numbers are between negative two and five. Okay. But also on this one is you do not include the negative two and you do not include the five because there's not an equal to bar under that. So if it's equal to, you would include that endpoint. Okay, this inequality negative three is less than or equal to x is less than 10 means x is a number between negative three and 10. Okay, and you, let's see, it does include the negative three. So that's not typed on there, right? You need to scratch that out, scratch that out. Okay, it does include the negative three because there's an equal to bar, but it does not include the 10. So that's a mistake on my hand. There. The equal to bar will always include, not having an equal to bar will not include. And we'll talk about what that means in just a minute here. <clears throat> okay, so this, what I'm kind of doing here is sort of a summary of the type of graphs you're going to see. So if you have A is less than X less than B, your graph is going to look like this. It's going to be two parentheses shaded in the middle. If you have A less than or equal to X less than or equal to B, that includes, so that's a bracket, that does not include that's a parenthesis. So it just means your shading on the number line is going to fall between. Okay? And we'll do specific examples in just a minute to kind of help you sort through this then. Okay? That's just a summary. So let's go down to the bottom and uh, just kind of focus on graphing inequalities and working with that a little bit today. Okay, so I'm giving you an inequality on, uh, or giving you a graph on a number line here. So first of all, what you have is, you know that you're greater than because you're shading to the right. So the way you're gonna write this inequality is you're gonna say X is greater than one, like that. So that's the graph of that inequality. Okay, if we shade to the right, it's greater than. If we shade to the left, it's less than. Okay? Yeah, we'll get to that in a few minutes, okay? You've learned how to do intervals before. We'll get to that in just a minute here, okay? Okay, so with this one, since there was a parenthesis there, then the one is excluded from the solution. Some of you may have learned how to do a graph like this, where you have a a bubble and then shade to the right. That's also a common way to teach that. Okay, the next one, the only difference is this is a bracket. So what's the inequality going to be? It's still greater than, but what's the difference? Greater than or equal to one. Okay, that means the number one it, whoops, is included. Okay, like that. Okay, so shading to the right is greater than, shading to the left is less than. Okay. Okay, the next one, you have a parenthesis and you're shading to the left, so this one is going to be x is less than three. The next one, you have a bracket on negative four, so that's going to be x is less than or equal to negative four. And again, on this one, when you have a parenthesis, you're excluding that number from the solution. When you have a bracket, you are including that in the solution, okay? That's just a super fast overview of things that you may have learned in an algebra class in high school. Less than shades to the left, greater than shades to the right. Does everybody understand that and understands that the equal to bar becomes a bracket to include. Not have an equal to bar is a parenthesis, meaning it's not included. Okay, all right. That's the mathematical meaning of that. Okay. Next thing on here, just kind of to wrap this graphing part up. Okay, this graph right here has a beginning and an end. It starts at negative six and it ends at negative two. We have two brackets. I think on that handout, those are two brackets. So what you're gonna have is two less than or equal to symbols than X in the middle. So whenever your solution is between two numbers, X is the, is, stands for any number in between negative six and negative two, including those two. So that is the inequality, okay? And by the way, the reason we do less than problems is because isn't it true that negative six is smaller than negative two? So you wouldn't want to say greater than and greater than. That doesn't make any sense, okay? 
So this graph says the solution is between the two numbers, negative 6 and negative 2. Is the negative 6 included or excluded? Included, because we have a bracket. How about the negative 2? Included or excluded? Included, because we have a bracket. Okay, just want to make sure you understand the language of the math here. Okay, before we actually start going through and doing much with this. Okay, the next one, you are between negative one and three. Okay, this is a bracket on the negative one, so you would say negative one less than or equal to to include the negative one. Then you would say less than three to exclude that because there's a parenthesis there. So you are including the negative one and you're excluding the three. So that's what all that stuff basically means then. Okay, all right, just trying to summarize what everything is here. If it's an in-between inequality, always have your x in the middle of two numbers with less than signs. You're never going to write it with greater than signs, okay? That number right there has to be smaller than that number in order for it to make sense, okay? Okay, we're going to do the next set today I, uh, to, to get together. So let's go down here and just kind of do this together because I haven't talked about interval notation yet. Okay, so first of all, you have to know which symbol is which, okay? This is a less than symbol. You have to know that. That means shade which way? To the left, okay? Now, I have a less than. Do I? Am I going to use a parenthesis or a bracket? Parenthesis. So put a parenthesis on the four, right on the four, then shade to the left. Okay, that 4 is excluded from the solution of that set then. Okay, the next thing that we want to do, and a lot of you have done this maybe in high school algebra, is you write this as an interval. Your intervals always have a beginning, comma, end. This thing goes forever to the left. Forever to the left, the symbol is negative infinity. So you would write this as parenthesis, negative infinity, comma, Four with a parenthesis. That's called interval notation. What that means is forever to the left, then end at four. Okay? And you always have a parenthesis on infinity. You never include infinity. That doesn't make any sense because infinity is not a number. Right? So you have that like that. Okay. The next symbol. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, if, if, it's, if you're shading to the left, it's going to be negative infinity, comma, the number. If you're shading to the right, it's going to be the number, comma, infinity. So it's going to follow the order that the numbers go on the number line, okay? Okay, the next one, this one is greater than, so which way do I shade? To the right, okay. Do I use a bracket or parenthesis? Use a bracket. So that graph is going to go like that. Okay, interval notation is always start, comma, finish. This starts at zero, and it goes forever to the right. So if you're going to the right, the infinity's on the right. Okay, so interval notation, you're going to say bracket zero, infinity with a parenthesis like that. So this thing should match what the graph's doing. Starts there and then goes on forever. Over here, it starts at negative infinity, then stops at four. So you have to have those ordered. Negative infinity is on the left, positive infinity is on the right. Okay? Okay, and the zero is included because there's a greater than or equal to it. Do you have a question? Or? What's that? You okay? You okay? Okay, all right, very good. Okay. All right, now the next one. Uh, which way do I shade? To the right, parenthesis or bracket? So put a parenthesis on negative 3 and shade to the right. Okay, interval notation, how will that how would that go? Negative 3, comma, infinity. Start, comma, finish. Okay, if you're shading to the right, infinity is on the right. Okay, is the negative 3 included or excluded? Doesn't have an equal to bar, so it's excluded. Okay, all right, that's how that goes in. Okay, so the next one, 5 halves is actually 
So which way do I shake, left or right? Your other, your other right, this way, okay? So you're going to shade to the left of 2.5. You're going to use a bracket or a parenthesis? Bracket to include. So just go to the 2.5, put your bracket right through like that, and then shade to the left, okay? So again, on this one, we are including the five halves. So now the interval notation, how does the interval notation start? Negative infinity, right? Then the order does matter. Yes. So if you shade to the left, infinity starts on the left. If you shade to the right, infinity is on the right. Okay. So the, the order is very important in your interval notation. That does matter. Okay. You okay? I can't hear you very well. Okay, good question. Okay, the reason is we never use a bracket on infinity. A bracket is telling us that we are including that number. Infinity is not really a number anyway. It's a concept. So if I put a bracket there, you would be telling me that it stops. And infinity does not stop. It goes on forever. That's why you're always going to have a parenthesis on infinity. Okay, so notice on every one of these problems, the infinity always had a parenthesis by it. That's why. Okay, good question. Okay, let's wrap this up, and I think this will be kind of a good stopping point here. Okay, this is an in-between inequality. So what you're going to do on this is you're going to exclude the negative 4. So you'll put a parenthesis on the negative 4. You're going to include the 4, so you'll put a bracket on that. Now, what this problem is saying is it's saying x is smaller than 4, so it's this way, but at the same time, it's saying x is bigger than negative 4, okay? So it's actually just between the two numbers. That's how you write an inequality that's in between. So then you just shade in the middle. That's how that would go. Now, interval notation is start, comma, finish. So you'll go parenthesis negative 4, comma, four, positive 4 of the bracket. So the interval notation is always doing what the number line is telling us. Start at negative 4, but don't include it. End at 4, but do include it. That's the idea. Okay? All right. And then the last one will go like this. Negative 3.5 is excluded. So put a parenthesis at negative 3.5. 5 is also excluded, so put a parenthesis there, then shade in the middle, and then the interval notation on this, real simple, there isn't any infinity, it's just negative 3.5 comma 5, and that's it, okay? So what that was was kind of a, a summary of how graphs go. Next class, we'll <laughs> begin to learn how to solve what we call in a class, okay? All right, is that okay with everybody, what I did there, just as a review? Okay, very good. I'll see you next week. Have a good weekend.